Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Nathan Hunt Podcast. We're delighted to have Darren McMahon on, former Ebbsfleet player, captain, manager. Um, got promoted with Fleet in the National League South and got us to the semi-finals of the National League playoffs. Um, and he's managing the Football League with Macclesfield, now manager at Dagenham. Had a great playing career as well, um, playing for West Ham, um, got promoted with Orient, and played for a lot of other non-league clubs. So, Darrell, how are you doing? Doing not too bad, thank you. Are you? Yeah, just just about getting through. Um, it's been a long time since we've been out, but, you know, just about. How, how you've, what have you been doing to cope with the boredom of lockdown? Homeschooling, really. I've got my um, my eldest daughter, Marnie, so she's in a reception, so. I've been doing home together before we're looking after the, I've got another little daughter as well, Aspen, who's a uh, hundred miles an hour. So we're looking after her. and see we got I've been busy, I've been keeping me busy. Has it has, um, it, been tough, has it been tough uh, keeping track of your daggers players whilst uh, being in lockdown? Oh, we've had we've had Zoom Zoom calls, we've had WhatsApp meetings, um they got to send training programmes initially at the start when we first got locked down. Obviously we've relaxed that now because we know our season's over. So just general catch up with players now and then, and they're free to call me whenever they want, obviously as well. Um, in terms of your football career, uh, you started at West Ham. How did you get into football? Um, I started playing back home in Dublin when I was uh, six, seven, eight. Um, played pl- played for my local team, Neil Town Rangers. Then I went to a team called Cherry Orchard, which is the biggest team in South Dublin, really. Um, played for my district. Then you get scouted. I went, I went on trial for probably every team in the country I was at. Um, then when I got to 15, I had a decision to make on who I joined. Um, and it was over. Was it tough, obviously, moving from, from Ireland to, to London with West Ham? Um, yes and no. Yes, because you miss your family. I've got a little brother and sister. I'm the eldest of three kids, my mum and dad. Um, but no, because you're following your dream. You, are, you, want, you want to be a footballer and um, you know that you got to be committed to be a footballer from, from a very young age and I was committed to that. Mm. Um, and what was it like getting your youth Irish caps? Uh, probably the highlight of your career, really. I think, you know, to, to represent your country um, and in any sport or in anything, I think it's a, a massive achievement. Um, I don't know how many times I've played, probably 30 times, 40 times maybe across different age groups. Played in the European Championships, the Olympics, Youth Olympics. Um, yeah, I'm very proud to represent the country. After obviously leaving West Ham, you went on to, to Port Vale on a non-contract. Was it obviously not? Was it difficult going from a more of a stable contract at, at West Ham to an, obviously a, not a proper contract at Port Vale? I, I was due to go to another Premier League club at the time, um, and I fell through uh, very late. And hence why I had another club at the start of the season. I'd agreed to go to another Premier League club after West Ham. Um, so I torn down probably six months at League Two teams because our part was down there. And then I found out in late June that that wasn't going to happen. So it left me um, in a difficult position. So um, I really enjoyed my time quite well. Met some brilliant people. Um, that started my journey to Leighton Orient because Dean Smith, the now Aston Villa manager, was playing for quite well. And when we got on really well, um, he kind of set me up for Leighton Orient because he was a good friend of and then Dean followed me down to Leighton Orient not too long after. Uh, and obviously you spoke about Leighton Orient. Um, uh, I believe you got a six-month deal there. What was that like? Um, prove yourself. I think the thing is as well, I didn't have any first team football. I'd, I'd had a little bit of talk here and broke my arm. I'd had, I don't know what, nine, ten appearances in League One for Fort Bell. Uh, could have stayed at Fort Bell. I wanted to move back down to London again because that's what I knew. Um, it's a great opportunity to prove myself at Lake Norwich, like a good club, some good people there, and I, and I really enjoyed my time there. Obviously, you played a lot, I played a lot of games in League Two with Orient, and you got promoted to, to League One. How did that feel? Obviously, getting that promotion so early in your career. Um, it was a great year. We we weren't the best team. We had a fantastic team spirit. Um, there's not many players really from the team that I've, I've gone on. In League Two at the time, you had players like Nathan Tyson, who went on to play at Nottingham Forest. Junior Ago got a refugee soul, who went on to play for Nottingham Forest as well. Uh, and Roger Johnson at Wickham, who went on to have a good career at Birmingham, etc. So there was, there was probably uh, 
teams in the division with maybe better individual players than we had, but we were a very good team. Uh, we were a very together team. Uh, and the way we went up as well, on the, literally the last kick of the game at Oxford, we relegated Oxford and we went up. It was an incredible, uh, incredible day. So I've seen the pictures uh, this week because it was the anniversary of, of us doing it this week. And I forgot how many fans we had there. It was incredible. We filled the whole stand up there. And, uh, yeah, it was a re- really good day. Mm. And you was obviously a part of a Stevenage team that uh, won the FA Trophy. What was that like being part of that? Yeah, we did a good fight. I got injured in the semi-final against Graves. Then I got in. I got to slip my eyebrow. My eyebrow fell into me. I back in head. I didn't play a lot before the final. To be honest, I didn't play in the final. But it was um, that was a special team. That Stevenage team had some really good, got really good characters and a really good players in it. People, the same as Leighton Orient that I still speak to today. Um, Adam Miller springs to mind, midfield player. Steve Morrison, very good player. Um, Mr. Cole, um, British player. Mark Beard, Alan Julian. It was a really, really talented squad and uh, great to win the first game at Wembley as well. At the new Wembley. Um, and then you went to Wembley again, obviously the new Wembley again with, with Cambridge. Um, but lost that final. What was that like? Obviously losing that final with Cambridge after two good years at Stevenage. Got to losing finals, really. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, it, 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 you're always got to be losing lose a final. It, it's one of them losing a player final. Part of you feels like you've been successful in getting there because you know you've got to finish the player positions. You've got to battle through playoffs, which are which are tough games. Um, mentally, they're tough games as well as physically. Um, the huge, huge sense of achievement that you've got there, but the body blow of losing is huge as well. That all oh, your season's walk has effectively come to nothing. And that's how you feel when that final whistle goes. But after that, when you reflect and look back on what you did, what you done well, what you didn't do well, you, you got to move forward from that. And then you went to Farnborough, which at the time they were um, very strong. They had very high ambitions. What was it like moving there? So at the time we leave in Cambridge, I could have stayed in the National League with other teams. Um, I, I can't remember how old I was. I wanted to be 25-ish, 26-ish maybe at the time. Um, and I wanted to start coaching. So I, I signed up to start my coaching badges that summer. And it was something that I really wanted to get into for the next stage of my career. And I was, I felt that at 26, I wasn't going to play uh, at a level where I'd have to, I could retire. So I needed to have another job, another skill set. And I wanted to have that role and I felt it was the right time for me to go to Farnborough who paid me a decent wage that I could practice my, do, my, do my coaching, the volunteer coaching and to kind of hone my skills and make mistakes doing that alongside playing still uh, in, a, in, a, in a good team. What was it like? Obviously, we spoke to, to Jack King earlier and he said that that team could have done well in League 2. What was it like being such a good team, winning the league? Unfortunately, the season after you did lose to the to underdogs fleet in that in that playoff final the, in the National League South. Uh, we, we we had a good team. Me, Kingy, Gary Holloway in midfield. We probably could have gone into League Two really. And after, after my foot season at Armour, I could have gone to Oxford United with Chris Wilder. I went to meet Chris and I was quite stupidly to stay, to stay at Armour and carry on with coaching maybe. But um, we 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 had a good side, a, a very good side. Dean McDonald, Bradley Bob, Kezi Eby, who you'll know from Earth Fleet. Um, it was a good time. It was a very, very good time. Uh, and you obviously spoke about um, getting your coaching badges. You got um, a player coach role at Boreham Wood. How was that? Well, Luke Garrard, the, the now manager, was we were on the same club together. Um, similar age, we got on well. We got put together in a couple of tasks we were doing. Obviously, we knew we should have played against each other as well in the same league. Um, I was leaving Farnborough. After we lost to Ebsley, I spoke to Ebsley at Liam Dace, I can't met Liam. I spoke to Gary Hill at Woken. Um, I met Luke, well, um, Ian Allenton and Danny Hunter, the former chairman. And they were giving me a full time coaching job as well as a player. So that for me was, you know, an opportunity that I couldn't turn down. And it's something that I'll help make me what I am now in terms of the. On days at Boreham Wood, you know, you're doing three and four coaching sessions a day. It was firing, it was like chucking in the deep end. Um, coaching kids with varying abilities as well. Some really talented kids, some not so talented kids just there to play football. Um, I loved every minute of it, really. 
did you did you learn a lot in that time? Obviously, being coaching at such a young age, was it was it just a great opportunity to, to get? Would you learn a lot from that that period? You learn enough to make mistakes, but it's like anything. You, you go in, you've never coached properly before in terms of day to day back to back coaching sessions, and you think you know what you're going to do, and all of a sudden different things pop up. You've got to just doing adapters. Um, so it's a real challenge at the start, but I think around about two or three months after I joined Boreham Wood, I got promoted to an assistant manager on the ring, um, which was great for my Luke, Luke was almost like sports team coach with me as well, so me and Luke full time and Ian, the manager, wasn't, so we were there every day, so we had the opportunity to plan and prepare for games Saturday. And when I first come in as assistant manager, we have got and that we were second bottom and we got ourselves up to the 10th pretty quick. So, um, it was really, really well Um, at that time, um, if you'd been offered uh, just a matter like a coaching job or you know, assistant manager or even the manager, uh, without playing, would have you taken it at that time or would you just want to have kept playing at the same time? I wouldn't have taken it then. I, have taken it I think at that, at, that, at that stage. Um, at Boreham Wood and leaving farm to Boreham Wood, um, I still felt I was one of the best players in the league at the time. So I, I, I wouldn't have um, stopped playing. Uh, it would have been too early for me to start. I, I, start, I stopped early enough as it was, but I think it would have been too early for me. Uh, you then moved from, went from Eastleigh, uh, you had a good, good spell there, and then went to, to Dover. Um, you, had a, you had a good time there, but unfortunately, you lost a, lost another final. What was it like? Obviously, losing again. Did you feel like you were kind of cursed in in playoff finals? No, I, I, never, I never. I've been asked this question so many times. I've never, I've never ever felt like that ever. Because, you know, there's eleven of us who played. The subs come on. Manager, staff, board. As far as I'm concerned, and I've always been concerned, we're all in it together, and I was just a, a piece of a puzzle in, in a team. I wasn't the only person there. Or, um, in, in, in the final for Dover, I got sent off in the, I can't remember if it was in normal time or extra time, to be honest. Um, I'm glad I've done it. I got a bit of stick for doing it because I think we, we, we were 2-1 down and they were breaking through. It was, it was Theo Lewis actually and, and someone else for Salisbury and it, against me. Who would leave me back for, for a corner, a second corner, right? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, I, I, brought, I brought someone down and got sent off. We ended up equalising after I went off to go to extra time. Um, but no, listen, Dover was a good club. EC, I, I love being at EC when I first went there with Ian Baird. Um, Stuart Donald was a terrific chairman and uh, the club had real ambition and I, I really enjoyed that as well. Um, and then when you first signed for Fleet um, for a fee of £13,000, did you feel the pressure of the fee behind you? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I think, listen, I, that, that's got, I think every player will say at every level, I'll probably move for that kind of fee three or four times in 18 months. Um, and it didn't really bother me, to be honest. What was it like, obviously, you became captain that season, what was it like to, to captain Fleet that, that year? Um, I think I just kind of grew into it, really. I think, obviously, we had Laura at the time, he, he was the captain. Uh, Laura might, might have got injured, I missed a few games, and I, I came in as captain then, around Christmas time. Um, and then we went on a good run, and I was captain. They just, I just, they just kind of stayed with me. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I, I was captain at Eastleigh. I was captain Dover. I was captain at Palmer. I was captain at U team level and stuff like that. I was kind of think captain or graphic now for most teams I've been at. So I've always been in and around being the captain. Um, and what would you say was your best moment as a fleet player? Player. <laughs> mm. Difficult to play you, you, uh, When you start playing, you remember goals you scored, games you played in. You, you normally remember, um, I don't know, remember a goal I scored against Gloucester, free kick, mm. uh, trophy, Forest Green, my last goal. Uh, um, 5 0, I scored a free kick in Boxing Day. Games against Bromley in the playoffs and the fourth one, especially, we've been 4 0 in, in a half time. He actually battered them. Um, I love my teammates. Love playing with my teammates. I had brilliant teammates. Love playing for Brownie. Gritty. Met great people. Um, pinpoint one. I've been 
obviously me being at Eversley for five years, so many great things. There. Was it? Was it? Obviously, you had a good season there. We've gone to the playoffs again. Was it? Was it obviously you won the the Kent Senior Cup. Was that obviously a good experience winning that? Oh, yeah, um, it's, not, it's not the be all and end all, obviously, which we know the County Cup is nice to win it, obviously, as well. But um, the big game was playoff game, so we got to go. Was it was it tough losing that one as well? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that was probably the, the one that hurt me the most as a player. Um, um, I felt that we were better than to be honest, and I'm them. I felt we um, they'd done it in the day with their tactics how they wanted to play, and I felt we fell into a trap really. Um, that, that, that was foolish. Like I said, it happens. And yeah, I think I'm looking back as well on that. We been thrown together as a team and you know I, I can remember playing the first pre-season game in July and we had 11 players mm. it escalated really quickly to becoming a decent team and I thought we were building on the season as well mm. and then obviously you said um, you know you've obviously lost quite a few finals and you said it didn't really phase you but as a player how difficult is it to pick yourself up the next season after coming so close to going up to having to pick yourself up and go oh we've got to go again I never felt like that. It's, it's, I, I always felt, you, you know, play football is a privilege. You know, uh, play football and be able to go out and express yourself and represent yourself, your family and play from the, the paying public. I always felt that you, you've got a duty to go out and be professional and do your best. Uh, and you win, you lose. And as long as you can do it, given 100%, not, no one can, can question you or criticise you. If they take it that seriously. As, as long as I can look myself in the mirror. And the team in the mirror, um, which I could always do at Ipswich. Um, your, your playing days obviously ended at, at Boreham Wood, which you were out a few years earlier. What was what made you retire at Boreham Wood? Yep, it up. Was it? Did you enjoy your obviously last spell of, of playing football? Was did you, did you feel the time was right at that at that, at that time? I didn't enjoy my second spell at Boreham Wood. Um, I kind of felt that we, we had such a really professional environment with building a head sleep. Um, I left as captain when I left. I didn't think I sh- should have left. I thought I should have still been there. Uh, and I was probably, I probably was going to work at a, an academy at a Premier League club full time if I didn't get the head sleep job, to be honest. I, I was going to retire them anyway. So I, did, I didn't enjoy that last three, four months. As much, not not nothing got to do with Bora Moore. I, I, Danny Hunt and Kayon, I love him. Luke, I love him. Ian, I love him. But it just wasn't. Um, it, I, I didn't feel the same. So I kind of, I wasn't enjoying my football, and I always knew that when I didn't enjoy something, I was I was never going to do it. And then obviously you spoke about that. You know, you became the caretaker boss at, at Fleet, and then you got the the job permanently soon after. What was it like to become a manager at such a young age for a manager? Um, interesting. I think it was when I went in to see Peter. I was obviously a caddy manager for eighteen months as well. Um, manager, at the time. so I went in to see Peter about um academy stuff, and uh, then obviously left the day before. And he said, "Do you want the job?" Job. Mm. job. I said yes. Yeah. I didn't think anything else. Didn't talk about a contract. Didn't talk about anything else. Kind of, you went all right. Speak to later on. I come home, told my wife, and then started thinking, why did I say yes? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I don't know. It just felt right for me, um, and that's how it happened, really. Was it was it difficult? Obviously, you were only like 32, 31 when some of the players in the squad were were older than you. Was it difficult? Obviously. Um, yeah, was it difficult? Obviously, when some of the players were older than you, and you were obviously trying to be, in, obviously being the manager. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I think um, I don't care about anyone's age really. Whether I mean, Gr- Gritty's my sister, and he's 60, 62. So I don't really, you know, worry about. I think the, the biggest thing for me was when I got the job. It was the team finished tenth. Um, wasn't good from from. The players we had, the investment in the club, um, and we had to improve. Uh, 
doesn't mean I met every player after the top game. Um, told them to expect for them from the summer, what I expect from them back in pre season. Uh, we've got to be better than we were last season and the year before. Uh, I told everyone straight what I expected, so there was no hiding place. It didn't, it didn't matter if that was, you know, Adam Cunningham, you know, Penny Clark or whoever. Brandon Hall, Preston Edwards, I treated everyone the same. Danny Kepler, Stewie Lewis. It was, um, this is what we're going to, so we're going to play and try to get everyone to buy into it. And if they did buy into it, they weren't going to be there very long. And that, and that was kind of how we did it. Mm. And obviously, um, at Fleet, you was uh, in, in and around the playoffs again. Um, how different is it managing a team going into the playoffs and being a player going into a playoffs? Um, very, very, very different. As a, as a player, really, you want to look after yourself. You don't think about two, three, seven, six, one. Pitch. You know, who we playing? Analyzing the opposition, putting together your game plan. You've only got to go in and listen to what your manager tactics are and try and implement them. So that that, that was different. Um, the, the, the playoff with with Sutton um, in that league when we lost to Sutton was obviously different as well because we we had such a believable first half of the season. Uh, and then second half, we dropped so many games. Uh, we went playoffs. Look, looking back on it now, I wouldn't have said it at the time, but on a look down on that you were like, you felt we were we were we were we were a good side, but we saved that you. Obviously, we lost that. We lost in the playoff final against Maystone. Um, how tough was that? Obviously, we if you conceded that late goal, um, you see Kedda scored two pens. How tough was that? Obviously, you know when they when they take it to penalties. What did you say to your players? Obviously, conceding that late goal is enough to concentrate on the penalties. So, what did I say to them when they? Um, what did you say to them before, before the penalties? But look, I can't change your mind. I believe you're going to score. So, you can't say. How did you, re- obviously, what did you say to the players after the game? Proud of them and thanks. Thanks for the season, my, my fourth season in management. And I said that. Kind of what I said before that for me we got eight four points that year. Two, two points a game in my season as a manager. I've never done it before. I'm lucky to lose in the playoffs. We were what we eight seconds away from winning two one against Maystone. Mm-hmm. Gutting as it all was, when you look back and you, you you reflect on what happened, I was proud of the players and and I'm proud of the staff. I'm proud of the club and how we kind of finished tenth the year before. Totally transformed how we played, and I don't care what anyone says. That first six months of that season, I've never seen a team play as good as we did in the conference half. The football we played, the football we played was out of sport. Was that obviously one of your your main philosophies? Because I remember when you first came in, we were just some of the football, the passing football. Was that obviously something you wanted to get in straight away? Obviously, that passing style of play that you've kept, obviously at Dagenham and, and Macclesfield as well. Yes, I think it's important that you. I always said to the always and me as a player my whole career, if I was bored playing, imagine people who are watching. That's what I always feel. Imagine like how boring if I'm playing a game, how boring is this game and people are actually watching this game. So I think the players have to be excited. I've got to be excited as the, the player and as the manager watching it. And if that's happening, there's every chance everyone else is. And then you can kind of create a good vibe around your football club and your football team that everyone can buy into. And Immediately when I got the job, that was my mantra to create a style that the players could buy into and enjoy playing and they could feel that freedom to go and express themselves, which is which is really important to me. Mm. And then uh, the season after, we just missed out on on the title to Maidenhead and on any other season, I think we would have gone up as champions. Um, how, how frustrating was it to just miss out like that? Um, wasn't as frustrating as the year before. Mm. But I, th- I think in, in, the, in the second season, we had some really... I can remember playing... We lost to Gosport on a Saturday and we lost to Champions on the Monday night. And uh, in, It was in August time, late August, maybe, maybe September, I can't remember now. Um, and it was the first time 
we lost back to back the whole time I've been there. And I, can remember, I can remember going down the uh, the challenge for the tunnel where it's a bit longer. Um, and I was getting abused by our fans, like hammering me, and I thought, yeah, this is a bit tricky. Now I've gone forward. So um, I think the owner, Abdullah, on Thursday or Friday, he, he was terrific. Um, and we, we beat Margate, maybe. Was Margate 4 0 on Saturday after that, 5 0. And there was that, there was. We played Dartford around Christmas time. We had, we had a we lost or we drew that game. I can't remember either. On, on Boxing Day, lost two one, I think. Um, and there were some bad bad kind of moments in it. And the turning point in, in the season um, was probably Kidderminster away in the FA Trophy, and we lost. I think I four nil was it? Three nil, I think. It could have been fourteen nil. There were that much. <laughs> that was the real. From training that Monday morning, when we went in, um, we'd really set about a task then to be, you know, we, we need to kick on it. And we um, think we played 20 uh, season and 120 and drew four. We, we spoke to, to Kedders and he said that the team that season just had a little bit more up front. Obviously, we had Sam Deary and was there longer. Cookie, Bubsy up front, he scored some big goals. Um, do you see well, that was a much more, more, much more balanced side of more going forward to stop getting those draws at the end of the season? Yeah, we have more firepower the second season. The, the second season, what we tried to do as a half felt in the fourth season that we had, a, 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 the team was 27, 28, the age of the team. Um, and I felt as good as all them players were and they were terrific for me. We probably hit a ceiling. We couldn't, and the, the players that we had as well, because the fourth season before hadn't gone so well, they'd, they'd lost the through. And I felt almost blown up by Christmas because everyone was so eager to do well for the club. Um, in the second season, we tried to recruit some younger players who had no seed and that could develop between Al, for example, that we felt that they were playing the opportunity to perform here and move on. And I think players like that had a huge impact in the team in terms of the energy of the team and the the general everyday banter and stuff like that, they, they just brought a different vibe to the team. Alongside the professionalism of your windfields and draweries and uh, obviously Bobby I played with as well. Um, I love Bobby. You know, he's always good for a goal. Um, at the back end of the season before my sound, he was a lot of fun. And then did have gone about Sam in the final really. Um I think obviously one of those games in that season was that 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 win against Maidenhead. Obviously, I think that as you said, you know, it was it didn't feel like that season we'd lost we'd lost the title, but we we given everything we can. Obviously, we beat Maidenhead. There wasn't much more we could do. We got ninety four points, probably the highest ever points total to never get an actual cap. How important was it to to stop Maidenhead having their party? Was that obviously a, was a obviously a, you said in the program they said that we want Epsi to go up as well. They said obviously like they they sort of seemed like they won it. You know what I mean? I think, to be fair, go, go, going into that game, um, got there, and I think Maidenhead have always been quite a, a dogged team, very, been a good team, good team, the National League, now the hard play. When we got there, you could see it was very relaxed there. They doubled their crowd. The, their players were kind of mingling around the pitch with, 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 with the fans and stuff like that. It just looked like a bit of a, the party had started. Um, and... I said to the guys, the lads before the game, that they're not ready to play today. They're not ready to play. So everyone thinks they're going to pick the trophy up. The National League, but the National League's have got a trophy here. All the papers are here. They're not normally here at Maidenhead. Three's a made sweet. Good luck to Maidenhead winning the league today. So I brought that up. And I um, and we had a, 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 I don't know, there's a look in the eye of the players that day that was, I knew we'd win. Um, and I always say, the day, that day we won't beat Maidenhead. For me, that was the day we went off because I felt that no matter what happened in the playoffs, the mental strength of the group from that game was incredible. And obviously, you've, you've mentioned that mental strength. How important was that mental strength? Obviously, when we've, got, we've gone into Chelmsford, there was a sort of a, a gritty sort of first half and then Cookie gets sent off. How tough was that? You know, you've obviously lost a few playoff finals. How, you know, you did you, how, what were you thinking at half time? What did you say to the players when Cookie just got sent off before half time? Were you thinking, Oh no, is this happening again? I don't know if Cookie will like me saying this. I went into the changing room, I was the first one in, and um, Cookie's in there crying. Hmm. 
I probably can't swear on here, can I? So I've told him some choice for to get out of the way. No, get out of the way and we need to win a game here. Um, so Cookie went outside to the treatment room and we kept. And then um, we changed formation at half time. Chelmsford played 3 4 3. Um, and I decided Chelmsford at the time were quite direct. They were going straight into Dixon and looking to get seconds off that. Um, Chris Dixon and um, we played a diamond. We felt that we could keep the ball away from them in their shape. I felt that if we have one up front, they've got a back three and a goalkeeper. So just do the math for me, that was 1v4 in their favour. But in the rest of the pitch, we outnumbered them everywhere. So we could build up our play a bit better and play through their lines to create chances. Um, that's what I thought anyway. I mean, <laughs> but we stuck to and I thought, in particular, players like Jack Powell when he came on in that game was terrific. Technical ability so good. Sam's technical ability was so good. Dukesy's technical ability so good. And I just felt that we could keep the ball away from them, even though they had an extra man. And then, obviously, you said when they scored. When when they scored, did you have any doubts that you know, oh, this is gonna, you know, not be our season again? Um, it's easy for me to say now that I didn't, but I really didn't. I, I felt that we were going to win. Um, I don't know why. I really don't know why. And um, I can remember doing an interview after the game with Charles and he said to me, you look like the most relaxed person in the, in the stadium. And I did feel like that. I just felt I had total trust in players. I had total trust that we'd get opportunities. We had Darren McQueen to come on that I felt could really affect their back three. Um, I don't know, I just felt it was our year. After the Maidenhead game, I just thought, just another cookie getting sent off, another part story. Well, it was obviously like getting those those two goals. I think Sammy Dewan for that first goal, that assist is incredible. He's done that play and that ball into Davo, and then uh, and then obviously Deering and Drury's ball to McQueen. What was it like getting those two goals in quick succession? Then you just try and think about subs straight away. You think like, right, how can we make the win? Um, so I, I I watched the um, I think I watched it last summer. Um, it's like a 10 minute clip of, of the final on YouTube. And the first time I watched it, the final, I watched it, I never watched it back. And I keep on from Dave Heads that first ball in. You can remember like the whole stadium lifting and the energy. And um, if you could bottle up, you'd be a millionaire because if, if you could sell it, it was the energy of the group of the stadium was terrific. And I just felt like we were, we were going to win. I, I just I don't, know, I don't know why. It's a strange feeling you get sometimes in football where you feel that. The momentum's with you and, and it's going to be very difficult for the opposition to stop it. And the players then could feel the crowd. The crowd fought off the players. We had 10 players. We were the underdogs. And we were never the underdogs. Absolutely. We were always the ones that were seen to have to go and win all the time. I think we just thrived off that, that environment. But the, the, the time when Darren scored, all you're thinking about is subs. What a chance. Mm-hmm. How are they going to change it? How are we going to adapt to it to stop them? Obviously, like, obviously the, the, that nervous 15 minutes in the end, but obviously we won the game. Um, obviously, we've spoken before on, on here about obviously you've, you've lost quite a few player finals. What was it like, obviously, lifting that trophy with Kedders um, that day? Obviously, three years ago today, actually, yeah, as we record this. Hi, is it? Yeah, three years ago today. Wait, um, relief, probably. I was so happy for the players, in particular, someone like Ked. Ked, Ked, has, Ked has been. Um, the year before, he also got two two penalties in the final, then missed missed the one that, that, that we lost the game on. He broke his arm, put his body on the line every single time I asked him to. Every, and the, the, the things that people don't see is Keds on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and Thursday morning, and Friday morning, he's the same. Um, so I was, I was delighted for, for the players, really. I, I think um, delighted for Peter Varney, delighted for Abdullah, that he'd seen, he'd had, he'd had that success and um, that he craved. Um, yeah, I think, I think I don't know, you just take a back seat probably and think, I'm glad we've done that. And then you know you've got to start planning now for next year. Mm. After, after a few beers, though. We had a few beers before. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, after a good season, um, you was obviously going to attract uh, interest from other clubs. Did you have any opportunities to leave at, at the time? Or? I think there was lots, lots, lots of speculation about... Um, I think we, I think we said, I think we had, 
86 points, 94 points, or 84, 96, whatever it, whatever it was. We, we, we were just under two points a game for two whole seasons, which was the best in the country at the time from Premier League down to behind us. So I think, and, and obviously I would have been 32 at the time, 33. I'm only 25 now. Mm. I'm only, it's, sorry, I'm 26 now. Um, so I think um, naturally you have some interest from, from, from clubs, but I was enjoying what I was doing, so I was never looking to go anywhere. What, what was the plan, obviously? What were the expectations that season? You, you recruited really well, so you got Magrian, Bushy, um, I think Payne came in that summer, and obviously quietly during the season, what was the expectation? Was it to get in the playoffs, or was it just sort of mid-table? You know? We felt we'd come in as un- an unknown, and we felt that in the National League, there are some big teams in the National League, obviously, and we felt that, and we a lot, most of our, maybe not other teams and managers and players and boards, but I think most of the fans seem as a, as a train station. Yeah, so, obviously, yeah. So if, yeah if, if you were going to play Wrexham or you were going to play Tranmere or they were coming to us, we were absolutely tough to them. And we had players as good as all of them. So it's just making the players believe in that and don't, don't worry about um, the size of their club. We're a club building. And we'd, we'd always kind of look at it as well that our ambition was that we were going to try and do something that Ebsley had never done before. Make history for the football club. We, we were going to be the pioneers. We were going to be the greatest team in the club's history. And when we played Tranmere Rexon, they could never be that. They could, the, the, the Tranmere team we played could never do with the Tranmere team the championship done years ago and Rexon. We, we were in a position where we could really... And that was our ambition. Internally, that was obviously as well. Outwardly, I was probably saying save off relegation. That's probably what I was saying. But internally, <laughs> mm. and then obviously we ended up getting into the playoffs, which was amazing in itself. And then, you know, we played all the shot, and you know that was, talk me through that night uh, in your head. That was more nerve wracking than a champion final. <laughs> I thought they were a really good team. To be fair. I thought they were a really, really good team. One of them yeah. Yeah. that we faced, really. The, the football they played, um, and we, we found it difficult against the league game. Um, we, we'd had a plan to, to, to sit back, so fresh and counter attack, in which we felt we could with Kilson, with White, with with the pace we had in the team. Balls into Kedwell, Ked gets hold of it, Dukes, he joins him, Pally can join him. We felt we had. We had to do that in, in that game and it, it walked well apart from getting the goal in the we had a penalty again in, in, in that game which Ted has missed but uh, I mean I believe uh, roller coaster motion um, obviously it wasn't just obviously the late goal from, from Dave obviously that I remember at the time thinking why has Dean Marks put that Luke of us and Dave's got that great header and then obviously in the, in the, in the penalties as well at 3-1 it just I thought I thought we'd, I'm going home in a minute. Um, what was it like? What that was? What was that like? Obviously, two, two sort of crazy comebacks in 15 minutes or so. There was, there was two. There were two funny things in it. When Ranty put that ball in, yeah, as soon as he did it, I was, I turned around, started swearing. <laughs> Gone out for a corner for us. Well, what is he doing? And it's the worst ball in the world. He's doing it. <laughs> Dave will tell you it was a great assist, but I'm not too sure about it. Um, and in the penalty shootout, the one that got me was Wabo, Norman. So mm. I've seen him walk up, and with penalties, I, I, I always leave it to the players. I'll go and do it. If you feel confident, do it. If you don't feel confident, don't take one. If you're not taking, if you're not sure, you're going to be able to have the confidence. Because I've taken penalties as a player in, in shootout. I took one for Dover against Eastley. Just when I left Eastley um, in, in, in the playoff final. A long walk, everyone's feeling you, everyone hates you, you're there to be shot at, so you have to be confident that you're going to score. When I saw Wabba walk up, I was like, oh no, oh no. Not, 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 not because I thought he'd miss, but I thought if he did miss, the effect of having him as a young player. Yeah, yeah, I, wasn't he? I was looking at our team thinking, far more experienced player than him that I expected to be walking up with the ball under their arm. So I was so grateful that he scored for his own 
career and his own development that he didn't have to go through a shock of missing a penalty on the telly um, with all his friends probably watching as well um, and then I thought we were good Jack Connor's great penalty Ranty great penalty that's what Ashmore does mm. and then obviously in the in the semi-final we went to Tranmere and you know I've said this before uh, in parts of it especially when we went 2-1 up I, I generally thought we was going to win it um, but obviously it wasn't meant to be um, but how proud of you were, uh, were you? That was probably my... If, I'll go back. So you asked me my favourite player as an Ebbsfleet player. Mm. That game was my favourite game as Ebbsfleet managed Ram player. Because we were down in a minute to go and the players had given absolutely everything they had. They had nothing else to give. And, and we Obviously, we played late extra time, played early at 12 o'clock in the heat on Saturday. When, obviously, extra time, people were knackered out on their feet. The fans who were there were singing about the team, how good the team was. Daryl McMahon's red and white army. The players are giving a lot on the pitch in our fourth season in the league. I remember talking to Gritty and going, Gritty, could you remember we beat Bishop Stafford 5 0? Look oh, how quickly we've, you know, helped create this for everyone. It was, it was, it was a, uh, that was a special day, even though we lost. They like, could figure out how far the club had come and, and, and how together everyone was. You think, um, uh, Nathan and, and, and Kedders have both said to us they think that the whole squad going up to that game were absolutely knackered. Was it was it difficult, obviously, trying to set up a game plan? Obviously, we were very counter-attacking that day. Um, do you think if it was a you know a couple of days later, you know, we've been able to obviously guide them a little bit more? Obviously, they were a great team, but do you think we had to be we were so tired it was hard to like get them? Yes and no. I think we we counter-attacked because I felt that was the safest way to save some legs for us, that we couldn't go higher pressing them and leaving space in behind us. They obviously had Norwood that was good at getting in behind as well. Um, we were fine mentally and physically, and, and we had we had no subs really. If I'm being honest, we had we had, we had Shieldy, Payne out injured. Um, we had nowhere really to go. Kills come off at a back injury. The bus on the way home, you looked like we were coming out of the war. Nobody <laughs> nobody could even sit up. We had six players lying on the floor on the bus on the way home because they couldn't sit up properly. Um, if we had some extra days, yes, but the, 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 way, the, the way the playoffs were far massive it allowed us into it. I mean, Ramir would have gone anyway, if I'm being honest. It kind of lost the year before. It was just meant to be for them. What, what was the, the plan going into next season? Because obviously we bought, we're in three good players, obviously Ebu, um, Jack and Cheeky. What was, the, what was the plan for next season? To build on what to build on what we've done, we, we we knew that then going into the next season we wouldn't be an unknown quantity as we were maybe the year before to catch people in the half and we were going in and trying to um cheaply decent age, um Ibu a very good age and Kingy also an older player, great experience and I felt that um Clarkie and Winter were unbelievable together as, as a parent for two years for me, but I felt Kingy gives you a bit more quality and composure in the ball. That felt that we could use dictate the ball in in that. Mm. And you you spoke about um, how we wouldn't be an unknown quantity anymore. Do you think that's why you know we started off so poorly because teams knew that you know they had to set up a little bit different against us because we were you know we weren't just a pushover team. We were a side that was going to give them a good game. Well, we to be to be honest, I don't think we started poorly in terms of performance. Mm. Uh, Analyze the team by performance. So I'm sure if you ask anyone who's played for me, there's been times that I've walked in and we've lost, and I've said well done. And times I've walked in, we've won, and I've had a go at everyone. And it's only because of the, the, the state of performance. I've uh, again something that anyone who's played for me will say that whatever happens in terms of the result, it's my fault. As the manager, it's on me. That's on me. But you're accountable for your performance. Now, if you can on how I want you to perform to the level you need to perform, like you won't be playing. Now, in them games, we were slightly off in terms of taking chances. We were creating the chances, but we didn't take them. Um, and that, to me, will always come, as long as you keep believing and keep performing at that level. Um, and I'm pretty sure in September time, we were touring the league. Yeah, we, we hit some good form. We beat Barnet, Eastley. We, we, we actually put some really good performances in. And then, September, yeah. we in the league and then we had a horrendous October yeah um, obviously in sort of 
late October time, you, you left Fleet by mutual consent. Was it tough, obviously, leaving Fleet? You had some, as you said, you've had some great memories there. You've obviously, you know, going from sort of playing against teams like Bishop Stortford to, to holding your own against Tranmere and, and Wrexham and clubs like that. Was it difficult, obviously, um, having to, to go on a new journey, obviously, um, leaving, leaving October? It was difficult leaving the players behind because we've had a relationship for a long time with the majority of them. Um, that's for, for us and far more, that's my place to walk the, the players in that change room. Before anything else, that's who I see every day, that's who I, I interact with every day, and that's who I was supposed to lead every day. So leave, leaving that behind is all, is all this stuff. Um, when I left the next day, I had a call from the team to go and join them, that, that I didn't want to do. I felt that I wanted to have a bit of a break. I didn't realise how tired I was when I left Edge Fleet until probably 10 days later. When I felt mentally that I'd given, thrown myself into it for such a long time, and three and a half years is a long time to be at the club as a manager. Uh, and I enjoyed going away. I had a couple of holidays with my family that um, was really nice. And then a nice Christmas, done some more for BT. That's in Spanish. So I, I tried to use the time as best I could to, but, but now it's hard to leave. And when you've been there five years as well, it's, it's a part of it's a part of my life and my wife's life, my kids' life. They come to every day. So um, yeah, it, it, it was difficult. Um, and then obviously you got um, the the job at Macclesfield. Um, what drew you to them? Was it the fact that it was in the EFL, or was it their ambition? It wasn't. Know, what drew? You? It wasn't the ambition, I, w- I, w- I wouldn't say. It, w- it was probably the... We knew we had to stay in the league. It was, it was the on-paper fact, the smallest budget in the division. Mm. It was the youngest team in the division, with the youngest manager in the division. So, we were going to be, at the, at basically, essentially, an under-23 team playing in the football league. Uh, that was exciting. We had some terrific young players. Um, I love walking the cars every day. There was a real down to where hungry, old school mentality with the group, um, and I really enjoyed it. It, it, was, it was difficult. I'm, I'm as well publicised the stuff off the pitch. Probably at the back end of Hebsley and, and at Macclesfield, it was that them things are difficult to deal with. But you, you, you have to deal with the players and make sure they're okay. And, and I really enjoyed the challenge. Did you did you have to move up to Macclesfield, or did you commute every day? No, I just have to have, so I tend to leave at half four or five o'clock Monday morning. Um, then I'll come home after training our game Tuesday and then go back up to the same stay up there for Saturday. Was it tough obviously doing that? So getting up at four or five, was, that, was it difficult doing that every every day? It's a long drive. It's a long drive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, listen, it, it was just what you did. You, you, you commit to it, you do it. Uh, you, got, you miss your wife and kids and stuff like that in, in the period I was there, but um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, did you would you feel there was a big difference between the quality in players in the, in the National League or League Two? Because I've always thought that teams that get up from the National League, maybe because it's obviously there's only two two spots, but usually if you get into League Two, then you stay there. Do, would you say there was a big difference in sort of quality between League Two and the National League? A big difference in terms of mentality across the league. So, like you said, you'll get you'll get you'll get you get two exceptional, three exceptional teams in the National League that will go into that league and comfortably go and get on with it. But in League Two, across the whole league, the mentality is, very, is everyone's a little bit more switched on. There's less mistakes, there's less errors. If you, if you make a mistake, you're going to get punished a bit more. Like every league, you got you got the level, it gets a bit um, And that was the back up. Now, on any given day, Corey Whiteley's better than every striker in League Two, on any given day. But Corey, you know, if, if he has them days a bit more regular, he'd be in there. Kind of thing, you know. I just think that mentality is just different in, in the football league. Mm. And obviously uh, at Macclesfield, you know, whereas at Ebbsfleet, you know, you was we was fighting for promotion every year. Uh, at Macclesfield, he battling against relegation. Uh, how difficult is it? Is the two, you know, obviously, how difficult is the jumbo? Exact same. Exact same for me in that you go. I mean, the, the, the pressure from an owner or the, the expectation on a fan base is different. But in terms of you and the change room with your players, you want to win every game. So you try your confidence, have a plan, a style, 
that again people can enjoy and get into and buy into and try and get people to perform. We knew we didn't have the best players. We had lots of talented players that were trying to find consistency to move. I mean, in the team we had in January, I think three or four of them went to League One. Um, and I expect more to move on from there as well. So th- th- there's real talent the max for the team, but it was just the consistency. You know, when, with, with young players at that level, that's consistently inconsistent. And it is what it is. Um, but you've got to keep them believing and keep them on the, on, on the straight and narrow on our hands. Going to help them achieve their goals as well. Obviously, you, you've left, you left Macclesfield in sort of January time with obviously the off the field stuff. Ramping up, you you got an opportunity at Dagenham. What was it like? Obviously, was that the right move for you? It was a big club, and you know they've had League One and League Two experiences not that not that long ago. Yeah, it's a club I know well. I worked, I worked at Dagenham for three years um, in their academy, um, so I know it really well. Um, it's a challenge, listen, it's a big challenge, especially now with what's obviously happening with you know. Uh, coronavirus, etc. Going into next season, the, the, the team, the ambition of the owners is, is 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 big. They want they want to they want to get the football league. Uh, the fans want to get the football league. The team underachieved for two years. I went in. They hadn't won for ten or eleven games. Hadn't won. Hadn't won game since September. Uh, got got real real talent in in, in the group. There were a lot of injuries of issues off the pitch that we need to sort out and probably need to add our two players to it as well to, to be really competitive but it's a good club it's a good club What was it like obviously going obviously knowing you were going there and you've already got four of your ex-players there obviously Sam Bagasan um, uh, Clarkey um, I, thought, I thought one more there's one more I can't remember his name um, Don't worry about it Me the camera Don't worry <laughs> Um yeah, we'll see what was it like obviously having your obviously Clark was a massive part for you. What was it like having them there or already there? Westy. Oh yeah, Westy, yeah, you signed him, you signed him as well. Mm. Um Gabby Zakawani if I didn't go find him as well. Um I can't I'll be honest with you, I don't care. <laughs> I, I I went in there to try and improve the team quickly because it, it was Twenty in the league, and we played more games than everybody below us. And um, we quickly had to start winning from a team that had a month for ten or eleven games. And, and um, it was nice to see some friendly faces. I think some of them were happy to see me. Um, but it was about getting onto the train going and walking because you, you know you haven't got time to chat about this, that, and the other. You need to get to walk and start winning games pretty quickly, especially in, in the situation we were in. Mm. And now, obviously, the, the National League has ended. Um, how do you, you think, in your, your opinion, the season should be uh, decided? Um, I think it's really difficult. Obviously, in my, in my opinion, if, 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 there's, if there's no promotion, there's no relegation. If there is promotion, there should be relegation. If, mm. So it depends on where you want to pick it. If you're going to promote someone, you've got to relegate someone. You're not going to promote someone and you shouldn't relegate anyone either. So the decision for me is null and void. Or you decide it on some unfair way. Whether it's points per game, whether it's where you are now. Uh, which doesn't seem fair. Mm. Um, but what would I do? I'd be gutted if, if, if someone didn't go up. Because somebody deserves to go up. But how do you decide who it is? Mm. Uh, much as we all would say Barrow have been there all season so they should go up um, Harrogate will say we're four points behind them we've got playing mm, and there's Notts County as well they're on a roll in the big club so it, it, it's very difficult it's, it's I'd hate to be making the decisions and I think mm. it takes so long it's because nobody wants to you know and, and, and every formula you produce that looks like that might work somebody will give you a reason why it's unfair on someone else and it's back to the drawing board again. It's a really difficult thing to do. But I'm, I'm how they going to do it. I think the, easy, the easiest way to do it is to say null and void, no one up, no one down. That's the easiest way to do it. Mm. Fair on teams like that. You, you, you can't, uh, you know, you're, you're the teams that haven't done so well, you're rewarding them right once they have done well, which probably isn't fair. Obviously, if you said, you know, Dagenham have got ambitions to, to get into the Football League and, Obviously, push on from there. What was it like? Obviously, having those those owners there, and you know, obviously, 
when we when we played them when you when you were obviously still managing we beat them we beat them 3-0 it was a much that Dagenham now to what it is now to with Tim Howard and the consortium of the American owners what was it was it same sort of like the vibe ever to, to get to the football league was it actually that that ambition there from Dagenham well, I think, you know what it's, it was, it's, it's different because that Ebb Street um, when, I, when I took over I felt like it was a blank canvas I felt that I can really put my stamp on what this needs to look like now and what um, the style of play I mean I had the academy as well we we had we had some good players in that as well, so that was a little bit probably less pressurising as well because I could have gone into Ebbsfleet and been absolutely useless, and I gave it a go and it is what it is. And then because I've done okay there, I've got a job in League Two. I go to Dagenham's a bit more spotlight on me maybe, and then Dagenham's got like you just said recent history of being in League Two and League One, so the sort of club is already set in style and what it looks like and then you've, I've got to sort of blend into it with my own style as well um, and that's what I'm looking to do and I think the owners wanted someone young um, and ambitious to, to go with the team and the owners are very young as well they kind of just fit in nicely Obviously I had a few sort of Dagenham fans ask me to say this. what 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 are you also, obviously with coronavirus it's obviously really difficult but what are you, are you are you sort? Are you getting people on contracts, or are you trying to like look? Are you are you looking at players now, or are you just kind of like just not working, or are you just like yeah? What what are you doing at the moment for looking for next season? Very boring because every man says it, but you never stop looking. I think you you know you speak to ten agents today, your own players, other players ring you, other managers ring you, other chairman ring you to ask you what your team might do. Exact same as what you're doing. And I think to be brutally honest, we're all probably doing waiting to find out. Has, every manager has uh, you've all got players you want to re-sign and release etc uh, so you know when the season's going to start Not at our level league 2 level league 1 level really afford to sign a player and sit for god knows how long so I think we have to be very mindful of what's going on in the world and football's got to take a back seat until you know everyone's safe because that's that's paramount really at the minute um, yeah, do you want to go through your, your best 11? I've got a pack as well, one not Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. This, is, this is quite high tech for us. Sorry. This is low tech for me. Yeah, there we know. Yeah, this is good, isn't it? This is the best we've had. Bowl. Wayne Henderson, you good in? Uh, yeah, I think so. I played at Wayne when I was 10. Premier League, we played for Dublin together, played for Ireland together until we were 20. Um, he played for Aston, he was at Aston Villa as a kid. Um, he's recently retired and he's a, he's a football agent now. So he was an outstanding goalkeeper. Played for Ireland a couple of times ago, the 14 team. Very good. I've gone for three at the back. Right centre back, Anton Ferdinand. Played you together for years at West Ham. Uh, top player, top lad. Uh, Grant had a very good career. I'll come back to him. Left side, Elliot Ward. Um, Elliot played at West Ham as well. Youth and reserves, youth teams together. Um, played for Blackburn, Norwich. Uh, very composed, good footballer. Uh, top, top lad. We lived together for a little bit as well. In the middle, my skipper, John Mackey. Uh, late Norwegian captain when we won one promotion. Um, best captain I've ever played for. He probably couldn't pass the ball from me to there, but he put his face in front of anything at any stage to win a game of football, and he was a true, true leader and an old school leader. And um, left wing back, I got my Aiden Palmer. You can't take it, Aiden. I was calling that. Calling. Aiden was in the youth team at Leighton Orient when I was a player there, just coming through, played a couple of games with him there, um, and I, I played a bit of a part in getting them to Ebbsfleet because I knew him well and he, he, I thought he was a terrific player and he, his knee injury re- really killed him. I, I was looking forward to managing him because I really liked him. Right side, I've got Glenn Johnson. Um, again, in my youth team, I'm sure you know who he is. Went on to have a great top, top lad. Um, and I a great player. Midfield, I've got Joe Cole, who we played with at West Ham. Um, Joe, super talented, could do things with a football that would could do things with an orange that people could do with a football, to be honest. Um, he's a top player. Leon Britton, 
Bondi again in the UK West Ham reserve at West Ham. Terrific player. Um, real ability. Knew he was going to be a top player. Passed the ball well. I've gone for Ramsey in behind, which might surprise him. Um, when I first played with Dean at Dover, um, he was a thousand miles an hour, always side tackling everyone. Uh, as he got a bit older, he really, really improved so much and um, a real competitor, a winner. And I, and I really enjoyed playing with Ramsey, um, both at Dover and, and Ebsley. For my strikers, I've gone for Jermaine Defoe. Uh, Again, youth team and reserves a lot of West Ham and pre-season friendlies, etc. Um, Jarvis, as you like, one of the best trainers I've ever seen. One of them, one of them guys that you play a five aside and you can play in five minutes. And he's already scored seven goals out of nowhere. Fifth, he was a top, top player, a top lad as well. Um, and partner him, Gary Alexander. So Gary was in the late Norwegian team. Uh, big, strong, aggressive striker. Uh, terrific in the air and a, and a real kind of old-fashioned number nine and um, a, good, a, good, a good leader and, and Gary went on from there to go and win promotion to the championship for Millwall and plays for Hull and stuff like that a very good player but okay chaps yeah I think that's the best 11 we've had you know we've, we usually have to put an edit of uh, who we've got we haven't had uh, someone put a board up so that's the best 11 we've had um, just before we go uh, I put I put with you were coming on on Instagram we've got a few, just a few more questions um, let's have a look. Um, how do how do you? You've mentioned it before, but what do you say before penalty shootouts? You just you just said do you let them, do, you, do you choose who takes the penalties or do you just let them get on with it? I I I, I can pick five. You can watch someone in training take penalty kicks, and yeah, you know it's easy to take penalties in training, etc. But when you're in a match situation and in a competitive game when everyone's watching that, it's so it's so unique a penalty shootout that you're as you pick the ball up, the whole stadium's watching you walk up and you've got to be able to handle that pressure. So um you look for stronger characters really. The ones that in in, in, a, in essence sometimes you don't really care. You don't you're not scared to miss someone that's really, you know, believes commits to it and Normally you score. Hence with Ranty. If you were to, I'm, sh- I'm sure when Ranty walk up to take the penalty, most people are like, why is he walk up to take the penalty? But Ranty's got courage. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a brave player. And, um, a lot of it's luck. A lot. And, hold, and holding your nerve. As much, as much as the technical stuff, you know, mentally you've got to be strong to take penalty. Uh, another one is... Uh... I've seen your playing days. Who was the best manager you had? Uh, best manager. Mark Stimson at Steven was really good. I love Glenn Roder at West Ham. Um, I absolutely love Glenn. Best best coach probably. Love Brownie, my Ebsley. Terrific coach. Top man. Um, Gary Brabham at Cambridge. So many, so many that, that, you, that you meet and come across. Dean Smith at Orient, assistant manager, but he was awesome at Lingy. Um, I've had so many I've been so lucky to be honest Peter Taylor at Stevenage um, Graham Wesley like work ethic as a manager was off never seen nothing like it um, so you know you, you look and you learn off all different managers that you play for um, uh, did you enjoy your time at Fleet and what was the best what was your favourite moment obviously what's your favourite playing moment and your favourite uh, managing moment I loved it. I think I think anybody who knows me and I've played there so long, um, and anyone who spoke to me at the football club and the relationship I had with everybody from board, my players, fans, backroom staff, etc. I think everyone knows I enjoyed my time there. It's hard to pick for me a favorite, a favorite moment because I forget something else. It's just I would like I love being captain, scoring goals. I love winning more than anything else. Uh, love being manager, watch the team, the style of the team played with, how hard that team worked. Like I said, the Tranmere game, although we lost, you could see the togetherness of the whole football club um, was incredible. The way out, one of the biggest teams in the league, there's just so many moments, it's very hard just to pick one for me. I'll be here all night talking about that. Um, all right, second to last one. 
Um, how did it feel, obviously, in in the obviously looking back at the, the sort of when the the first National League South season? Um, what was it like in the White Hot game, and also what was the feeling going into the into the Maidstone game as well? The feeling with, with the team. Uh, yeah, just generally around the club as well. We were okay. I think we first game at White Hot. We actually played White Hot pitch really well, and we won there. We played there on that slope with about twenty foot drop, and we always had a sim- simple, simple tactic. And that we we would always try bend down the hill, so we'd be going up the hill for the half if we could win the toss, and we knew that we could just keep clipping it in behind their defence, and we had Goddard's to go in behind them that they couldn't stop um, and we could def- we, we, were, we were defensively a good team anyway and we felt that we could defend that well and it was going to be very hard to get in behind Kenny Clark and Achim Palmer Bonner and we could dominate going down the hill um, so we were really confident going to the game the, the, the one thing in the game at Whitehawk was it a 2-1 Whitehawk away um, 2-1 I think yeah and they, they obviously they beat us two, they, they were winning 2-1 in that game as well when they were when they went to us two and up and cruising it should have been threes and fours it should have been over uh, and, and, and the goal made a bit more ready back at our place and to be fair to Whitehawk coming to our place they were a better team in the day um, in, in, in the game um, and obviously luckily we won that one on penalties the game played so you just the ball is confident to be honest the ball is confident um, so our final final question on it um, as a final one of the, of the day obviously thanks for coming on um you, you've spoken about obviously meeting your wife at 16. Um, did that obviously help you down settle down in, in, in West Ham? Obviously, obviously, well, what, successful have you been? What have you heard about me? <laughs> uh, you, you don't have a plan for them things. Here. It just just happened. You know, I met met my uh, wife yeah at 16 and. Um, that's what Bayern at now, so I'll take back what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been together ever since. It's been quite a long time, 20, 20 years now. We've been together and um, it wouldn't happen any other way. It's pretty happy. Mm. Didn't have to settle down with the person, wasn't it, really? Um, no, not really. Um, obviously, thanks for coming on, Daryl. Obviously, every Fleet fan wants to wish you all the best. Obviously, we've got some great memories of you at Fleet, and obviously, wish you all the best with Dagenham. Hopefully, when you come to Stonebridge Road, you don't you know, beat us. But you know, maybe maybe yeah. may, maybe uh, we'll, we'll have some. We'll, maybe maybe we'll see you back at Fleet. Maybe uh, in, obviously, we want to see you the highest possible. Obviously, in the football league again. Maybe with Dagenham. But yeah, thanks for coming on. Obviously, big thanks to you for coming on. Um, stay yeah, safe through lockdown. Um, all, all the best for coming on. All the best, Daryl. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.